Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's stream. We're finally working on Faces of the Rainforest. Yay! We did it. We got past all the, the other stuff, and now we get to work on my favorite building. <laughs> and I'm terrified. Put simply, I'm terrified of this entire build because the entire building, if I pull it off because the game's loading anyway, is on an angle. It's a big glass box, and it's on an angle. So, fun. <laughs> but yeah, who do we have in the chat today? We have I saw we had Leaf, Philly Sports as always, George, I love your zoos, uh, Tundra, we got Totter, of course. Uh, Slamaro, Nico. Uh, yeah, how's everyone doing? Everyone, everyone doing pretty good today. Um, so yeah, today we are going to be working on uh, Roger Williams. So in this specific case, um, we are finally doing this monstrosity of a building that replaced the old Tropical America building, which I sort of prefer, but, you know, that's that's a whole other story. Um, but yeah, so once the game loads, now everyone probably is aware by now, but uh, we finally got that patch that Frontier was talking about, so we have updated officially to 1.43, so that means that we are now going to be at the mercy of, you know, all of our mods getting stripped away and stuff like that. So... Prior to this stream, I took the liberty of at least updating a few mods just to get everything, you know, okay. Hello, Marco. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we're still waiting for Planet Zoo to load. Um, but essentially what we did was uh, I updated all of the barnyard animals because I know everyone was asking, like, oh, Nick, please show, show off the alpaca, show off the, the donkey, etc. So I'm going to show that off next, uh, or I guess right now, since the game just loaded. So immediately I'm going to pause the game, because, you know, uh, everyone was talking about you know, the frame rates, and that is going to be, oh boy, yeah, look at that. So, uh, you know, way more optimized, huh, Frontier? More optimized. You fixed everything. Um, so, and this is on paused, which is funny, because if we go over to the farm area, you can see all the mods that I've, you know, uh, updated. So here's that donkey that everyone was saying I was clickbaiting. I, I did actually make a donkey. Um, so it's a miniature donkey, though right now it's the size of a normal uh, zebra, so it's a massive donkey. But, you know, I, I did I did make the uh, the donkey, so that's that's there. Uh, alpacas I've shown off before. They have this, uh, uh, so I was talking a bit about how modded animals, like newer modded animals, have this weird fur issue with like adding polygons, and the alpacas now have that. They didn't have it last time I showed it off, but now they do. So I don't know what's up with that. But yeah, as you can see, like the fur shader like really makes them messed up. I don't, I don't know what's up with that, but, um... You know, the alpacas now look good, it's just that issue. And then, weirdly enough, the mod I'm kind of most proud of with the entire, uh, you know, uh, farm animals is the Nubian goat. I think I made, uh, unfortunately, only one goat texture is available because it's obviously the um, doll sheep and I had to use the other for the Yowdad. So I was only able to get one texture for the goats, but I think they look pretty good. They have their little floppy ears and they look cute. And they, I, I tried to go with a color patterning that was, like, pretty, you know, distinctly, you know, a, a domestic goat. Well, I don't know why this one's floating. But uh, something that was a domestic goat, but also has some color variation that isn't super crazy. Like, if you zoom out, like, this doesn't look like, they're, you know, it's crazy, like, a, a crazy repetitive texture. So instead, you know, they're, you know, they have a little bit of brown, a little bit of white, but it's mostly a black goat. Um... And yeah, I think it like turned out pretty good. So this building over here is going to be the administration building. A building that I did not want to make. So, amazing community member Haribo, which I'm sure everyone knows who Haribo is, right? You know, everyone's seen Missoula and stuff, right? It's like top on the workshop. Easily like one of the best creators in the game. If not the best. Uh, especially like the, the combo of him and Drac is 
that's that's always the the greatest combination of all time. So he's going to turn this kind of box shape into the actual administration building, which is this very, very intricate building with like a big tower and a lot of curves and details and stuff. If anyone has uh, seen on my Discord, I showed it off. But that is going to be uh, done by Haribo. So uh, he's going to take care of that while I work on Face of the Rainforest over here. So that is going to be what we focus on. So if you don't mind me asking, as an amateur modder, what do you have to do in order to update mods? Just move the skins and mesh over. Yes, but it's a little bit more complicated than that for some mods. So as an example, this update, I actually checked. Um, even though I swapped out some uh, mods that I had, uh, apparently environment prop mods didn't break with this update. So if you had any environment mods in the game, like let's say my sloth mod. If you had my sloth mod installed or my eagle mods, they're fine. Uh, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't have changed. So as an example, like I didn't even modify the eagle files at all this uh, stream, but they're now back to being eagle or they're still eagles. So that is something I didn't even modify. So prop mods didn't change. However, uh, animal mods, they all broke. So, or not broke. They didn't break. So, uh, as a quick explanation of mod updates, anything that is a major update, a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Uh, so, as an example, the aquatic update was a one was a 1.4 update. That broke all mods. However, this mini update that we got, which was just bug fixes, was 1.43. Those will not break your mods if you reinstall them. So if you were to go on Nexus, it's a pain. You have to reinstall all your, all your mods, but you uh, they will not break. So you can just download, you know, my even my Babarusa mod that I just uploaded uh, like last night. That, um, if you were to download it right now, would be totally fine and would work uh, with your current version of the game. Um, past that, you know, it, it is a pain. Like I said, you have to manually upload everything again. But past that, it's not too, too bad. So when it comes to big updates, I will explain how to update those mods when you have an issue. Speaking of issues, this donkey's having an issue. <laughs> if you guys see that, like at a certain LOD, I might have to ma manually fix that. But like at a certain LOD, it starts freaking out. Um, so I'll try to fix that because I don't know what's up with it. <laughs> but uh, I think I had a similar issue once when I updated the dromedary camel. Um... I have a huge request. Could you replace the male Indian elephant with a mammoth? So, like, the one that NDP did? Because that's already been done, technically. It was just never released. I actually did update it at one point, so I actually have the files to NDP's woolly mammoth mod. I just never actually, um, really... Well, I can't release it, because it's not my mod to begin with, but NDP allowed me to play around with it. And so, the mammoth did look cool. Um... Which, uh, speaking of mammoths, and something I'm sort of rolling my eyes at, but uh, very good news. We are finally getting our very first custom animal for Planet Zoo as a mod, so we will not be replacing uh, animals. Now, the thing that I'm kind of rolling my eyes at, though, is the animal that, they, that Jesse specifically chose to be the first custom animal, and that is the thylacine, a.k.a. an extinct animal. So, I'm kind of rolling my eyes at that, because... Yeah, I'm not not really crazy about having that be the animal of choice that we're going with. But regardless, you know, that's that's what Jesse chose. So it's cool. We're getting a custom animal. It's just an extinct animal because paleo nerds have to invade everything. I made a ner uh, uh, meme actually like recently. We're talking about how paleo nerds are just invading everything. And it's true. Like, I, at first, I like to say, like, oh, well, you know, it's cool to have the occasional, like, quirky little, oh, we made a woolly mammoth, haha, that's funny. But no, it actually is, like, seemingly a problem, because I actually ran the numbers of Planet Zoom mods out there. Um, take away, let's say I were to drop dead and somehow all of my mods were wiped clean off of Nexus, right? What you would be left with on Nexus is 85% of mods would be either a extinct animal, a replacement, or a variant, or like a, like, 
a texture variant, like a melanistic version or an albino, like Gariel or something. And that's every single, that's 85% of all mods on Nexus, if you don't include me. So if I wasn't in the modding community at all, the Planet Zoo modding community would just be full of, oh, look, we're getting Woolly Mammoth and Smilodon and this extinct Auroch species and this extinct, you know, deer, mega, uh, mega, Megaloceros and, you know, giant ground sloth. And, like, I don't know why, but that is the case. And I'm just confused by it. And, like, again, this is just further evidence where the first custom animal for Planet Zoo is going to be an extinct animal. Much like how the very first animal ever modded for Planet Zoo was an extinct animal. And this is bleeding... It, this has bled into Mega Aquarium, where they have dinosaur mods. Um, that is bled over to Planet Coaster. They have dinosaur mods. Parkitect has dinosaur mods. You would think that the most logical thing with any community, especially, like, zoo fans who have been complaining, like, for the longest time, like, oh my god, why, you know, we need a new zoo game. Why why isn't there a new zoo game out? And yet, magically, apparently they just wanted a new zoo game to make a dinosaurs. Which is weird because, like I said, dinosaur nerds get JWE, JW2, PK, uh, Mesozoica, Parkosaurus. Like, <laughs> there's definitely no no shortage of dinosaurs tycoon games anymore. Meanwhile, zoo games, it's basically um, or uh, so this whole debate basically started though because I don't know if anyone is aware of Simply Zoo, but Simply Zoo is basically like a uh, Zoo Tycoon One inspired game that's going to be coming out from the developers of. Uh, prehistoric kingdom and immediately this game is like has only five animals confirmed for it and yet immediately people are already asking for dinosaurs and they're like oh well are we gonna get dinosaurs in the game and it's like why are you doing <laughs> like we don't even have something like a lion confirmed for the game and people are already like but where are the dinosaurs like to me that's just ridiculous and i just don't understand why everyone needs dinosaurs and everything because, yeah, it's, it's, I just, I don't get it. But, uh, yeah, that's just a little side tangent. Because, yeah, I've been thinking about that for, all, like, th the last few days I've, like, really thought about it. And I'm like, I don't get it. Because, like, even, because immediately when Jesse was mentioning, oh, well, um, I'm making the thylacine first. Everyone just goes, oh, that'd be so cool. Can you work on this, uh, this extinct, you know, species? Can you work on this extinct species? And I'm like, why are you, what are you talking about? Can we just get, like, an African rhino in the game before we do anything? Like, for, for a, again, a game that everyone complained about that we don't have moose or... Uh, you know, Black Rhino or stuff like that. Miraculously, everyone is sort of on board for just, you know, having only extinct animals be the only future content we get. But, um, so, yes. So today we are going to be starting on the Face of the Rainforest building. Now, um, I... I know in the thumbnail, everyone's seen my Golden Lion Tamarin mod, and so I have made that. I literally made it right before this stream, to, in, all, in all earnestness. Uh, but I'm not sure if I want to show it off just because of lag right now, but uh, I can verify it does exist. I'm not, like, click baiting or anything. I do have the Golden Lion Tamarin mod. It's using the female capuchin. Um, but I, I want to work on it and stuff anyway. What's up, Bold? Welcome to the stream. Moose, monkeys, and rhinos are all really common in zoos. Yeah, exactly. That's my point. Is like for everyone who's like, oh well, I want. Oh my, this game needs black and white rhinos. This game needs moose. This game needs sea lions. I seem to be the only one that's working on them because everyone else seems to be working on either lion remasters or extinct animals. And I'm like, what? Like I, I have to give it to at least. Th there's been a boom in mods lately. Um, I know Leaf has started get, getting into modding, and there's a few other people, like, um, uh, T-Rex on my server, and a Montezuma, and, like, there's a bunch of other new modders out there, uh, and they've been cranking out a lot of mods, but, yeah, like, it's just, <laughs> it, it's, it's getting kind of crazy. Hello, did I see a Lion Tamarin in the, in the thumbnail? You did, and I guess I, I'll try to show it off quick. I mean, it might be laggy. It'll definitely be laggy. 
I might just reduce the graphics down to lowest in truth. I hate this. I hate that the fence system in the game is, like, one of the laggiest parts. And so this is what I find fun. Like, I want to, like, Drew keeps, like, being like, oh, yeah, Nick, sure, uh, share uh, the park with us for the community showcase. I'm like, Drew, I really don't think you can handle it. And he's like, oh, no, I, I can handle whatever. I'm like, are you sure? Because <laughs> it, 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 it gets bad um, in certain areas. The, the beginning of the zoo... Oh, I should probably show that off, too, actually. Um, let me... Oh, we're on Zoo Tycoon 2 mode for graphics. But um, if I go over here, I actually updated one of the very first signs I did. So look at that. Look, we have little elephants and zebras and wild dogs and people and giraffes. And there's an African crown crane and a blue wildebeest. Uh, so I updated that sign so it's a lot more realistic to the actual sign. The old one is uh, a little bit closer to this one over here. The Jumbo Junction sign, which I am also going to be updating, or it's just very simplistic. So I'm going to be updating that very, very soon. Uh, as a minor thing, I also sort of tried to make elephants in the Maasai Marketplace sign. They're very, very minimalistic elephants, but it's better than what it was before. I'm just noticing now that the music stopped. So thank you for mentioning Zoo Tycoon 2 music, because <laughs> the uh, actual music needs to be updated. Uh, there we go. There's the music. Uh, Clouded Leopard would have been cool. Yeah, exactly. I would have, you know, preferred he, you know, did the, uh, Clouded Leopard or something like that. But yeah, so I'm just, I, I'm, ever since I started doing, like, the crazy detail stuff for, like, you know, um, as an example, like, you know, oh, the Australasia sign and stuff. Ever since I did that and, like, some of these posters that are, like, literally the exact posters from the game, I thought, okay, well, I should probably start updating some of the older stuff that I worked on that wasn't nearly as detailed. So that's why, like, stuff like this I started working on where it's like, okay, here's an updated version of the map. Here's an updated sign. I'll probably be updating the Wild Bite sign as well and stuff like that. So just throughout, like, you know, off camera, I'm just doing a lot of little touch-up areas to the park. I added, like, this little area over here, um, over by the um, moon bears and stuff. And, you know, just, just little miscellaneous things that, like, I know that some people, you know, wouldn't really care about. But, you know, I wanted to include... So let's try, because, I mean, obviously the game looks absolutely disgusting on lowest. So let's go to low. Yeah, this is more presentable. Low is still not good, but it's better, way better than um, <laughs> lowest. Because I have a beefy enough computer, but, you know. Uh, it doesn't stop the fact that fence systems and path systems and stuff in the game lag the hell out of the game. If you had to pick an extinct animal for a mod, I would have done Argentinosaurus as an or Argentavis as an extinct animal from the Ice Age that were massive. Yeah, like I just I love. Don't get me wrong, I love extinct animals, but I am one hundred percent a real existing animal you know, guy first and foremost. And so, like, yeah, every I, I just kind of... If this game was in a situation where we had everything we could possibly want out of living creatures, you know, if we had um, our African rhinos and moose and sea lion and gibbon and, you know, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and, a, and a, a large collection of existing animals, I'd be totally cool with that. If, if you wanted to be like, yeah, let's do a, an Ice Age animal pack or something. But if you're just, like, if we, since we are missing that stuff, I think making those extinct animals is just kind of like, I mean, in my opinion, just a waste. Because it's like, okay, you need, like, just to do a series like what Best in Slot is doing right now with a Pleistocene park, you need a lot of uh, Pleistocene animals. And so, even though, and like I said, there are a lot on the workshop, but it's sort of like, or on Nexus, I mean, it's just not as many as you really need to justify that sort of thing. 
So let me, I'm going to try to get, show you guys the Golden Lion Tamarin quick. And then I will possibly start work on the building. Because I at least want to get the building shell done today. So where is it? The monkey. He is a, he is a little furball though. Like I said, I'm still working on it a little bit. He kind of looks like a uh, lion maned macaque a little bit, um, just orange. But I mean, you know, obviously it's a small little monkey, so that's one of those things. Um, I'm doing a build right now that desperately needs a gibbon. Yeah, so if you want, you can uh, if if you would like, uh, you could download my gibbon mod that's on Nexus, and you can check it out there. Uh, the shark mod is, uh, was uninstalled, so, like, luckily I have backups of all of my mods and stuff that I made. I, I, I've sort of gotten into a, into a routine that's, like, almost, like, per, like, professional level with my mods, where uh, every mod I make, I make a clean folder, a backup folder, and, uh, my actual, like, base, um folder where I like, you know, in like work on the mods and manipulate the textures and stuff. And so like, no matter what, like, um, before I do anything, I will immediately just make a, a, a folder called clean with the base game files, just so that, you know, I, I get around the issue that I used to have way back in the day, uh, not even back in the day, like literally like, probably last month in truth, where I'd be like, hey, uh, hey, Minty, hey, Trico, hey, Rabbit, you, you guys want to send me the, the Warthog file? I kind of broke my game. And like, so at this point, I'm just, you know, trying my best here. Oh, boy. Yep. This is why I was very hesitant to try and hit play. It it'll sometimes work fine if I'm not record or uh, not streaming, because like like I said, that's the biggest thing is it's just so taxing on my computer to stream. So uh, you can kind of see them at like two mile two frames a second, but I will have to see. Uh, I agree with you. Love real animals and real zoos. I think that's the difference between people who really wanted a zoo game and those who just wanted to use it as another building game. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, and uh, to go even further, like, it's just not even like, oh, I just wanted it as a building game. I just wanted to, you know, like, Planet Zoo is going to just hold me over until Prehistoric Kingdom or something like that. But I think that's just kind of like the... the and, and so I was saying as a rebuttal to, uh, you know, if, if everyone keeps adding extinct animals to Planet Zoo, I'm just going to take over Prehistoric Kingdom and just make stuff like... Like, I was saying to Troll, the first mod I make for Prehistoric Kingdom is going to be the Northern White Rhino. And be like, what? It's a, it's a mod. <laughs> or, uh, it, uh, it's, well, it's a mod, and it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's technically an extinct animal. Like, but I'll have to see. Are the petting zoo farms animals on Nexus? I'm going to upload them all. Uh, I'm going to make a whole pack on Nexus once um, I upload that episode. Which that episode will come out far sooner. Than, oh, there's the Tamron. That episode's going to come out a lot sooner than the um, the Babarus episode. The Babarus episode was just scheduling with Julie and stuff. But uh, here you go. Here's the, here's the golden lion Tamron. He's a little floofer. <laughs> He's just basically like a little... Um, He's just literally just the female capuchin, but fluffy and orange. Uh, and he has a little little purple face. Um, with the custom animals, are people going to make all three variants of the animals? Um, I'd like to think they will. I'd like to think that hypothetically we're going to... Or I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that, you know modders out there are going to slow down too. Cause like I'm seeing a lot of just like half done mods just being like cranked out on my server. Like they're just like, cause there are literally probably about six or seven new modders out there. And they're just like going from, I've never made a single mod before. I don't know how to use blender to here's entire packs of mods. And I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like how like if you, if you can't do um like a, as an example i'm seeing a lot of issues with like their fur shaders and like deformations and uh bugs and stuff with their mods i guess even like people are having trouble downloading some of these new mods on nexus and i'm like okay well so maybe you know d d dial dial it back in a little bit focus on fixing those basic mod issues before you start going oh i'm gonna make an entire um you know i'm gonna make a whole east asian aviary pack it's like okay i'm maybe but up oh, thank you julie i appreciate it i assume she's on lunch right now she likes to donate every every stream but i i love you i i love you so much and i know you hate babarusas but you know doesn't change the way how i feel about you um, Leaf, it's funny you should say that because Lion, Lion Rider just announced that a friend of his has made a thylacine. Yes. Yeah, so, like, that's the, and I think Leaf is aware of that, so. Oh, Todd asked Leaf. Oh, well, I'll see ya. Thanks for dropping by. Uh, let's see. Oh my god, it's an orange. <laughs> it does kind of, like, it, it, from very, very far away, it's just, oh, it's an orange. Let me put it, because don't we have oranges in the game as an, like, a, uh, a thing? Orange. Yes, we do. Here we go. <laughs> Find the tamarind. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of funny, actually. I should just do this as a screenshot and just be like, where's the tamarind? <laughs> and I just fill this entire thing with oranges. Because it's a little tiny monkey. Little, little tiny monkey. But that's enough for the tiny monkey because we have to actually build your home. So we'll send you away for now. Uh, the manatee is part of my aquatic pack, yeah. So that's going to be released with the rest of the aquatic uh, aquatic pack when when that's done. Like I said, I'm, I'm even like debating if I even want to release it soon because at this rate, I might... I, I, I have one of two ideas in mind. I'm either going to just dump the entire aquatic pack now, like very soon, like within the next week. And just be like, listen, you guys waited long enough. It's almost the end of January now. Here's the aquatic pack. Here's the African penguin, the manatee, the shark, etc., etc. Or the second thing that I was really hoping I could get done was I wanted to have like a whole trailer done and a like a uh, park and stuff to like showcase them off in, and you know, like e everything like that. So I was very much, I, I want, and I, and the other thing was now with custom animals on the horizon, I was like, well, do I want to just hold off and make it so that like, you know, I just have aquatic animals as like, you know, official custom animals that you can add to your game and make it a true base, like essentially DLC pack. But, you know, I'll have to see because I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about it, you know, but we will see. So. Okay, before I actually start working, I, I want to figure out what materials I'm using to build the actual um, glass portion of the building. Because right now I have this glass, I don't know what kind it's called, the glass house wall. I could use glass modern. I think that might be what I use. Um, but I'm just, once again, I'm just looking at my other options. So glass... That's an option. Could build it out of glass panes. I don't really think this would work well because the glass panes don't really overlap very well. Because if, let's say, you know, like you can, unless you get it absolutely perfect, but even if it's perfect like this, you still see the line. So I'm not crazy about these glass panes. Um, I think there is one other, though, that is kind of okay. The opaque wall would be great if it was an actual wall, but it's or like a see-through wall, but it's not. Um, so I was thinking of using these. I, I want everyone else's opinion. What? Ooh, that could work. 
might use these. Hmm. I'm curious. Or this. Could build it out of it. Let's what's the closest? So they are like rectangles. So maybe this would work best if I use these. This is going to be a pain, but I think it might look better than if I were to use something else. So, I love using those. Makes for better angles anyway. Yeah, so I think I'm going to use these. Um, and then we'll go from there, I guess. Um, and then, let's see. Because I just want to... Let me put down a franc for scale. Because it, it is weird, like, building it, like, you know, a scale like this. Because you're like, okay, well, on one end, you know, everything is in to scale. But, like, then it, like, doesn't seem that big. But, like, yeah, like, then when I do this. Like, like at first, like, I'm like, oh, well, this little section is, like... This has to fit a bathroom and, like, you know, a little area. That doesn't seem big at all. But then, like, when I break it down and then it's like, okay, well, no. Like, this is, you can, this is a lot of room for, like, a lot of guests and stuff to be put in. So, I definitely think that is going to be how we're going to approach this. What's your newest mod plan? What, what are you going to make? Um, so for the next few, probably the next week or so, I'm probably just going to be focusing on the Face of the Rainforest mod. So as everyone's seen already, I've already done the Golden Lion Tamarin and the, uh, Two-Toed Sloth. But I am probably also going to be doing it, at least the Tamandua and the, um, Howler Monkey. And then I will have to see about the Titi Monkey and the, uh, Blue and Gold, or, uh, the Blue Macaw. Or the, what do they call it? The Hylacanth Macaw. Um, so I'm going to be working on all of those. And then I already have the Chilean Flamingo done. So I'm sort of also, like, if you notice, like, I'm sort of making my own little, like, packs unofficially just by, like, following the zoo layout. Because, like, with um, Asia, right? Like, I, I made... Uh, a mini Asia pack with, oh, well, you know, I have Takin, Red Crown Crane, White Cheeked Gibbon, Binturong, and Babarusa. That's an Asia pack. And then I have a mini Australia pack because I had the Wallaby mod and the Tree Kangaroo. And then, um, you know, I have a Barnyard pack. We have the goats, donkeys, alpaca. Um, I'm probably going to be updating the Watusi, and so I might just make a cow while I'm at it. But, uh,. Then I will be, you know, working on now a South America pack where, you know, Two-Toed Sloth and Golden Lion Tamarin and Howler Monkey and Tam Tamandua and Chilean Flamingo and etc. etc. It's going to be a lot of Flamingo mods because I know Leaf already made two Flamingos, so <laughs> I'm going to add a third one. So you're definitely going to have your pick of Flamingo choices at the end of the, you know, game's life cycle. Should Rias or Mountain Gorillas be in Planet Zoo? Um, I'm, see, like, animals that aren't normally in captivity, I'm a little bit more open to having in Planet Zoo than extinct animals, but, um, I think right now, the way the game is going, I'm fine if stuff like a mountain gorilla wasn't in the game, because as an example, I had, I, I don't know if you guys played the game, or have heard of the game Zooconomy, um, but that just came out on, or they released a demo on the Crytivo, um, Twitter page and I played the demo and I, everyone on my server was like hyping up like, oh my God, it's cool. It's, it's a cool zoo management game. It is one of the worst zoo rosters I've ever seen. There's African forest elephant, but that's it. That's the only elephant species, but then they have tiger just a just tiger, which is supposed to comprise of all tigers, but then they specify a white Bengal tiger, and if you look in the white Bengal tiger description, it says it's a Siberian tiger. Then when you look at, um, in their mammals page, they have great white sharks, and it's like, what? And that's the only fish in the game, and it's in the mammal category, and it's a great white shark, the one fish you can't have in captivity. 
Um, they have African forest elephant, not in captivity. Mountain gorillas, not in captivity. Um, uh, Tapanuli orangutan, questionably even an animal to begin with. Like, and I, like it, it's the weirdest roster I've ever seen. And past that, like, there's just uh, they have a rhino on their homepage, but there's no rhinos in the game at all. So, like, <laughs> at least Planet Zoo had Indian rhinos. They don't even have any rhinos. <laughs> So it is the weirdest game I've ever seen. Uh, will you do a little duck or chicken for the farm? I'll I, I'll have to see. I'm not really work uh, focusing on the chickens and stuff right now, but I may do like one in the future and stuff. Like as an example, I already explained this a few times, but the guinea hog mod is missing from the actual habitat, just because I needed it for. I have my male, you know, warthogs, which are actually warthogs right now for the babaroos, and then the females are over in Africa for the Red River Hog. So, unfortunately, I can't fit in the pig. And it's the same reason why I was only able to get one goat texture for all of them. I would have at least done, like, you know... Provided that they had um, male-female doll sheep available and even, like, albino versions or whatever, I could have probably gotten, you know, four... Or if I included the juvenile, up to six textures for the goats. But, like, unfortunately, that's just not going to work out right now. Because the doll sheep doesn't have uh, color variation. Which makes sense, because, you know, what are you supposed to do? Doll sheep don't have, you know, color variation. <laughs> um, let's see. They have Rias at the Greenville Zoo with the anteaters. At the yeah, so, like, um, I wouldn't mind Rias. Like, Rias I have no issue with. It's the same, like... Um, I was kind of hoping for, like, emus in the Australia pack uh, as just kind of, like, a throwaway. Like, well, if you already made the cassowary, you might as well make the emus. But, um, totally understand it. So, I think we're actually, you know, the lag has kind of reduced. Um, it's, it's not really laggy anymore. So, I think we are finally ready to start work on the actual building. So, uh, let me just quickly pull up my reference images and I can start a recording. So let's start recording. Give it a sec. All right, that's recording now. And now I can start work on the actual building. So we want to start out with the actual entrance building. So this area I want to make out, what kind of wall do I want to make it out of? I was thinking of actually using the opaque walls for this, um, cause I kind of liked uh, opaque. I like their texture um, a lot. Like I like how it's kind of like a off color a little bit and then I can also dye it to be whatever so in this case I want it to be like kind of like a bright orange I don't know why they chose orange for the color of the building but you know sure <laughs> why not um, and then yeah and then I'm not gonna work like I said right now I want to just focus entirely on um, getting the foundation of the building in place and then we will go from there so as an example this area right here that i'm working on is going to be the entrance to the actual building so i guess i could probably do this maybe because that shouldn't cut into the door i don't think no, I think I do want it one over. So if I do this now, we can get the door in place. Also, great news for Atlas Park fans. Atlas Park is coming back. And, uh, you know, probably to no surprise of anyone, um, I am going to be uh, working with uh, Drew and Estan. And they're going to help be uh, doing the the series with me. It's going to be like a collab, a uh, three-way collab. I, I might get more people on depending on if anyone like, maybe like Eben or something, like other modders, if they want to hop on, I, I'm cool with that as well. But um, 
they're going to be helping me out a lot because uh, they're going to be building some cool stuff for the park. And, you know, it's going to be pretty much the exact same as it's always been when I had Lemur on as a host. Um, only difference is now it's going to be Drew and Estan helping me out. And so I'm assuming it might even evolve to sort of be a uh, kind of because they like doing live streams as well. And I've been enjoying them as well. So Atlas Park might become a live stream only series. Um, but you know, I don't, I don't want to make any promises because again, it's very, very early into, um, I don't want to say development, but you know, we're, we're just, uh, figuring out everything, how everything's going to go. Um, but I said I would be working on the next episode of, uh, the park and then I will probably be sending it over to drew and then he can uh he can work on that tamper with some cool stuff uh estan actually had an awesome piece of concept art that he wanted to showcase and so i was totally down for it. like what it what he was planning like looked so cool and i think it'll it'll fit really uh really nicely into the park so yeah so like i said alice park will be coming back very very soon um and yeah, and that'll be cool. And then Mystic, I I, I keep forgetting about Mystic because like, you know, I, I was just so burnt with aquariums for a bit that I just totally like, you know, neglected <laughs> um, Mystic for a bit. But I technically have the Penguin episode done. I just haven't uploaded it. And I obviously have the Penguin mod as, you know, you've all seen by now. Um, but I will be, uh, you know, working on that and stuff to get that out. Cause I know that was probably another thing that people are like, yeah, but where's mystic? <laughs> um, so all of that will come with time. I am, I promise that much, but I am very excited about, um, Atlas park returning cause that was just a thing that I really liked doing. Um, it was just un not really feasible at the time to, like, you know, pull off and stuff. I'm trying to... There we go. I'm trying to place this on the ground properly. Okay, there we go. So. Now to figure out this mess. So... The glass... All the glass in the building is on a slant because reasons, because they like to make things difficult for me. And where are the glass pieces I said I would be using? Uh, what is it? This one, right? Yep. So let's see if I can align the surface. There we go. So, okay, uh, vote in the thing. How realistic should I go with this? Should I make them literally um, slanted like they're supposed to be? Or um, just for building sake, should I try to make it so that, you know, they, you know, line up decent enough? I don't know what that noise I just made was, but... So let's do this. Um, I hope Planet Zoo adds more color variation. Yeah, I definitely agree. I, I, I was hoping for that as well. Um, and I, when I was doing the goat mod, I was kind of like realizing that I'm like, they really don't have any animals in the game aside from the alpaca, really, that even have drastically different colors um in nature because i was thinking i was looking at like different pig like domestic pig and goat species and stuff like and cows tons of color variation like a ton but you know they just happen to always like choose like kind of exotic animals that are basically just like a flat color across the board with like um slight color hue shifts and and i think that was sort of the reasoning why they ended up doing what they did which was, you know, kind of half-assing the coloring. All right. So let's do this.
All right. Slant. I was worried you guys would say that. <laughs> but I will try. I'll try it, and we'll see how it goes. Like, actually put it this way. I'm literally going to... Um, like, basically select all of these, and then, like, kind of move them a little bit. Um, and then we're going to try to make the slant work. Okay, so... So they're sort of like this. They're about like that angle. Because what I worry about is as I lift this up... Actually... This could work. Okay, I feel... Ac weirdly enough, I'm feeling more confident in the slant now than I was initially going into this. I definitely think I can make this work. Because I think, yeah, honestly, I'm sorry I doubted my own abilities. I think this definitely can work. We are gonna... How tall do I want the building, though? That's the other thing. So that's looking good. But how tall is it? It is decently tall. I'm not going to even deny that. But I think that might be tall enough. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay. I'm cool with that. So, now this was sort of what I was scared of. Or, I don't want to save it as a blueprint. We never doubted you. Thank you, I love your zoos. I appreciate that. Because I doubt myself a lot. <laughs> um, and especially with this build, I was very much doubting my ability to make a slanted roof. I mean, in all... Honesty, that was... It's a lot <laughs> easier than I thought. I thought it was going to be far more uh, difficult to pull off effectively, but no, it's, you know... I mean, making this look nice is going to be difficult. Um... Because the uh, roof is sort of... This is sort of what I was fearing a little bit. But I think if I do this now... Yeah, that could work. So sort of like that, right? And then I can sort of just, you know... Now that that's all set, let's just see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks good. I'm totally cool with that. Good on me. So now, let's pull up this again. So, after, after it goes straight, or like slanted a little bit, um, it then evens out and goes flat. So, where are my little glass pieces again? Zonky is a Somali wild donkey and it's already on Nexus. Yeah, um, it's not updated, but it is on Nexus already. Are you going to upload Roger Williams on Steam? I will be uploading the whole thing on Steam when it's uh, completely done. I, I've just always found it weird, like... Or not weird, 
but I I just never really thought of like you know doing those like hi I'm gonna upload the same park for every single week for the next you know eight or nine months because like to me that that's just like okay you know it, it's special when it's first shown off you know when when you get a new zoo and it's like oh my god look at how good looking it is but if I just uploaded it weekly or whatever people would get sick of it. And, like, you know, it might make the, like, you know, trending page for a week. Like, and so put it this way. I can almost guarantee I'll be on trending when I, if I release the full map at once. But if I kept uploading the same unfinished map the whole time, it just wouldn't look right. And it's the same reason I really didn't want to show off the map even to, like, on community showcases like Rudy's or um, Drew's and stuff like that. Um, because, like, to me, it's just, at the end of the day, it's just not done yet. So, you know, if and when it's done, then, then I will likely, you know, showcase it and stuff. And I'll go on, like, a little Roger Williams tour. What's funny is I haven't even been tweeting at the zoo itself since the first episode. So in the fir the very first episode of the series, I, uh tweeted out and I got retweeted by uh, the official zoo's Twitter um, but like I haven't really been keeping up to date with like you know updating it frequently um, and so like I'm wondering if they're still aware of the series um, but I'm definitely like tempted to do that now just because I know that just Goron um, I think he's getting like interviewed by his local like uh, news station and stuff for like his zoo recreation and he's only, like, 50% of the way done. So I feel like, you know, like, if I, like, actually, you know, um, tried to, like, market it better to, uh, you know, people outside of the Planet Zoo community. Uh, and even within the Planet Zoo community, I'll, I'll even say. Um, I could probably get uh, a lot more notoriety that way. So let's see. So this is sort of what I was kind of like, eh, great, because the roof is at a slant. So like, trying to, this is easier 3D modeling than it is to um, accurately portray here. All right, because the other thing I'm wondering here is how I'm supposed to get the glass to fill in this triangle. Like we have this triangle now created from like the roof and I was even wondering how I was gonna do this normally, but I guess I'm just gonna kind of do it like this and just hope for the best. <laughs> Like, if I just fill it out normally. Um, stop it. The mods replace the animals. Feel sad. Just a modding breakthrough. Adding new animals. Calls and sounds. That's it. What? I'm confused. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Doing stuff for my future job at Cedar Point this summer. Oh, well, that's cool, Lindsay. I've never been to the Midwest, so I've, you know, all the, like, um, Cedar Fair and um, Cedar Point and stuff I've just never been to. The closest thing to, like, amusement parks that I have experience with are... Um, Six Flags, uh, I've been to Six Flags, New Jersey, as well as New England, and then a few others around here, like Lake Compounds. Um, and I know there's also another, there, there's one in New Hampshire called um, Canopy Lake that I've wanted to go to, and I had a chance to once, I just, like, didn't. I don't, I don't know why I didn't, for whatever reason. <laughs> but, um... 
I did want to go there at some point. But yeah, I've never left... I mean, aside from going to Europe once when I was 17, I've never been past the East Coast, really. I've been to a lot of states within the East Coast. I've been pretty much everywhere except the Carolinas and Georgia. But, um... Yeah, just haven't made it past the Appalachians. Never gone west of... <laughs> New York, essentially. That's correct. Just a modding breakthrough. Adding new animals with... Uh, yeah, I, well, I understand, like, that the... the custom animals thing have, like... Like, are you talking about, like, Jesse did it? He got the thing working in Planet Zoo, or because I don't think he did. I probably would have gotten a lot of alerts if that was the case. Um, but if you're asking if it's being worked on, yes. Like, that, that is in the works. Are you still doing the time lapses? I am. Um, they're just going to be a lot less... I like, I, I like doing the time lapses, but like they are very, very tedious to do. Um, relative to this. Like, this is nice and, you know, relaxing for me to do. I can just kind of hang out and build at my own pace. Um, and, you know, I have you guys to keep me company and that sort of thing. But I, I will still be doing time lapses. So, as an example, like, uh, as I record these live streams, I'm also double recording the episodes, or uh, my normal Roger Williams and Mystic and blah 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 episodes to be made into time lapses. That's why, um, if you notice, I usually spend like the beginning and end of the stream, you know, kind of being like, you know, just kind of like screwing around and, you know, showing off my mods and that sort of thing, and just kind of aimlessly walking around the park. But then I, at a certain point in the stream, I'll be like, okay, it's recording time. And so, like, right now is recording time where, like, I'm focusing on building. And, uh, unfortunately, that also means that, like, when I start building, I usually kind of ignore the chat a little bit. So I do apologize about that. I try to still, like, you know, frequent the chat as best I can. But, um... Obviously, like, you know, I'm... I'm focusing on building right now so that the time lapse doesn't get screwy because i never want to just like act completely like a a live stream or whatever and then uh the live stream is messed up because i'm just kind of like moving the camera around a lot and you know looking at you know stuff like oh look we're taking a break and we're gonna start showcasing the monkey mod afterward like midway through the build i don't like doing that usually for that reason because it usually just makes the Time lapses look really bad. All right. So I know I'm going a bit over the edge with the uh, thing right now. What I'm doing is I'm just trying to line up the roof with the actual um, the angle of the roof. And I'm apparently failing because I'm just noticing now that I haven't been doing that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know what I was doing, but so around that was maybe the last time it was okay. I, it can be a little bit above, but you know. We are still trying to stick to the angle the best I can. Can you do a mod? Can you do modding breakthrough, adding new animals? Uh, like I said, I can't. I mean, like I've tried, <laughs> definitely have, but Jesse is the one that's. You know, the the actual mastermind behind being able to do that sort of stuff. So I I I can't do that myself, but I know someone who can, and they're working on it. 
but they're working on the thylacine, like I said. So if anyone was expecting, you know, I know I said wild horse or whatever a few weeks ago. Apparently he's changed his mind. Now he's making a thylacine instead. So, But, you know, once he gets that figured out, I don't really care because once it's in our hands, then we all can just make whatever mods we want regardless of whatever. Dromedaries will never replace the camels. Dromedaries will use the copy. Uh, let's see. Could someone tell me what he said? I'm off school. Oh. Yeah, so the other thing I wanted to pass by everyone is um, I'm thinking of slightly modifying my stream schedule a little bit just to accommodate people in school and stuff and work and stuff of that nature. So I'm thinking of doing another stream day, I think Wednesdays. I think I might just do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday or something. Maybe a weekend day if people are up for that, if people want weekend days or something. But I'm thinking of attempting to do uh, kind of like a mid-afternoon 4.30 to 6.30 stream schedule. Uh, just to accommodate those people that can't, like, they, I, I get so many people every stream that are like, yep, can't make it, can't make it, you know, it's too early, I'm at school, I'm at work. This doesn't accommodate the West Coast. This doesn't accommodate X, Y, and Z. So in order to negate that, I'm going to try my best to start doing um, just a couple of, like, you know, later streams. Just to, uh, you know, like I said, just accommodate those, those folks who, you know, want to be in the streams. They just physically can't because of, you know, the timing and stuff. And that's totally understandable. And like I said, I wanted to try to also get a schedule that also accommodated for Drew and Estan. Because I don't want to be like, you know, we have a lot of crossover in our audiences. Like, I know, like, Bold as an example. If Drew or Estan were, like, streaming, um, uh, what's it called? You know, Planet Zoo, Beyond Wolf. I would not expect Bold to be hanging out on my stream if one of them was streaming Beyond Drew. Or uh, Beyond Wolf. Um, but, you know, if I can find a way to, you know, accommodate those overlap periods, that could be great. It's just so hard, because Planet Zoo is a very global community. And, you know, so we all have different schedules and stuff, be it, you know, Europe or Australia or the Americas. And even within the Americas, you have East Coast versus West Coast, etc. And so... You know, I'm, I'm going to try my best to, you know, just try to vary my stream schedule just so that we get some things. Hey, Nick, not sure if you saw Beyond Drew's Discord, but I'm making the Home Alone house. Oh, that's cool. I actually did, actually. I did see that over in um, his community share or whatever. Sunday morning coffee with Nick. I mean, yeah, I mean, I could maybe do that. I could do maybe Sunday mornings or, um, like, again, it, it, it's tough because, like, I also know that, like, uh, Simply Savannah also wanted to start streaming on Sundays. And so, like, that's the other thing. I'm like, I don't want to, you know. And I, I totally understand, like, the mindset of, like, well, Nick, you know, you can't please everyone. You have to, like, kind of, like, you know, draw the line. Somewhere. And I totally understand that. Um, but, you know, any any chance I can to, like, avoid that kind of unnecessary um, overlap uh, the better and so that's why like you know right now this time slot has sort of been working decent enough I get a, a decent you know amount of viewership and stuff and so I'm not really complaining about that all right let's do this now
just so that this all looks okay. Not crazy about doing what I'm doing right now, but it needs a roof, so. This is how I'm getting around that issue. And I also want to mention that I'm not totally sure how much of the building we're going to get done today. I wanted to at least get the framework done. Um, but I, I, I can't promise that, you know, everything is going to be done today. But we're looking pretty good. Looking spiffy right now. My buddy is doing a live beer stream for his birthday at 8 p.m. PST. I'm like, dude, that's 11 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's it's tough. Because, yeah, I definitely understand that entirely. Is, you know, that aspect of, like, well, you know, can't you... Because con I have friends on the West Coast as well. And it's the same thing where, like, they'll just be like, oh, okay, so uh, how about, you know say nine and it's like nine that's midnight for me <laughs> like and i feel really bad because uh trico and uh king Terra and a few other people on my discord are from australia and they're the real you know oddballs because australia you know to accommodate them is like very difficult because you know they're australia so they're like like something like not even just 12 hours ahead, but, like, it's, like, 22 or something. Like, it's it's confusing as hell. Like, Trico will come in the call and will be like, what time is it for you? And it'll be like, oh, like, you know, I, I, I'm it's 4 in the morning right now. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Why are you up? <laughs> He's like, well, it's the only time that people are on. And I'm like, I mean, I guess, but, like, you know, it's definitely not great. Um, okay. So, this needs to be angled. Everything with this building. Why does modern architecture love angles so much? Why do you have to love angles? <laughs> There's something I really love and hate about modern ar modernized architecture. Because as an example, let's get rid of all of this section. Let's get rid of all of this section and this section, this section, this section. Too many angles, man. We want a nice smooth roof. Or as smooth as I can get it, at least. And... might be the best we get is this right here and I can try to fake it a little bit by adding a couple of little details and stuff like trim and stuff and I'm not super concerned because you know you're gonna be looking at it from you know this perspective anyway but it is a pain 
I'll stay up and catch some of the stream, but Jesus, I'm old, yeah. No, I totally get that. Definitely, definitely understand. Alright, so, we need to do the brick, brick part now, painted brick. So, I'd say it starts about there, approximately, or I guess, yeah, it does, so it does this. Or does it? It maybe doesn't. I think it does this actually. And then there's no brick there. That's just a cover up. So this is luckily <laughs> the easy part. This is just a big brick box. So that's nice. Everyone loves big brick boxes, aren't I right? Hey Nick, not sure if you know, but my info boards are showing different language for moves. Uh, if I remove the localized language files that aren't English, would that cause an issue? Uh, no. I don't think it should. I mean, it might. I'm not totally sure about that specifically. Um... You can maybe ask Frontier themselves and like ask one of their customer support because unfortunately, like, I know a lot about like what should and shouldn't break your game, but like an issue like that, I'm not entirely sure about. So I'm sorry about that, but that I just don't know much about. Um, what does the brick look like on the other side? Just straight. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I'm not sure if it's mirrored or not. This is the only thing. I'd assume it would be, but maybe it's not. Hold on. I, I, I need to visualize for a second what it is like going through. So you go in, there's a bridge here, and then you exit out this way. You would exit out here. So like this. Then there's a bathroom. So you walk in, there's a bathroom right here. Tamandua is right there. some room for the backstage area that's what they like what I'm trying to oh <laughs> that's my brother actually so thank you welcome to the pride probably makes sense actually so thank you Josh <laughs> cool Lamau Nick Nick don't even notice I'm working man I'm working on I'm working on the building I don't even know the last time you went to the zoo actually but I'm working on the new new Tropical America building. And it's it's tough. It's a big, tough, tough building. It's a big box, essentially. 
It's like a big m mall. <laughs> See, I still don't get why this was necessary, though. Like, just like so for those who aren't aware of like the zoo's um, history, they used to have a and still have this building over here, which is the old Tropical America building. And that building still operates as a holding area for the Jamaican fruit bats, which are now off exhibit, as well as the giant anteater. And so they didn't demolish that building. They just thought, oh, we need a whole entire new building that costs $10 million to create. And it eliminated, you know, a bunch of animals that, you know, the zoos had forever, like uh, kangaroos and... Um, we had, uh, some smaller exhibits, like, I, I don't know if many people care about, like, um, smaller insects and stuff, but we had a little insect house that they had to get rid of, they had to move a bunch of our animals, um, but we lost stuff like, uh, cotton, cotton tail tamarins, we lost a few other animals, and we didn't really gain anything, we gained... Giant otters and tamandua and howler monkeys. That was it. Which, you know, are cool, but I don't think they're $10 million cool. Like, for that same $10 million, we could have gotten the polar bears back. Um, And so, I just... And, like, I don't know. I just... I never understood why this was the big part of the master plan that they decided we needed right away. Because it just doesn't make much sense to me. But, you know, it is what it is. It's, you know, it's what we ended up with. So I might have made it too tall. It's 12 meters high. Yeah, that's about right. 12 meter high wall. That's, what would 12 meters be? Approximately, like, uh... 12 times 3, maybe like, so it's like 30, 30 feet tall. That's about right. I think they dropped the ball with Reinforce. Yeah, I just, I, I don't, I don't really get that either. Like, I, I just don't understand what they saw with it that was like, so groundbreaking that was going to make a huge difference in, you know, the actual, like, how it was going to impact the zoo. Because they were, like, even before coronavirus, this thing opened up four months late. So it opened up in the middle of winter. So not prime zoo time. And then they're like, oh, my God, no one's coming to the zoo. I, w I don't know why, you know, this is such a big exhibit. Why, why are they not coming? And I'm like, well, maybe it's because they don't really care about monkeys all that much. And then it's like, but I don't understand. Like, you know, it's, you know, isn't this so cool? And it's like, it's a cool looking building, but like, there's just not a lot of anything of that. Like, put it this way. The master plan also calls for things like sea lions and penguins and tigers and grizzly bears, all of which I believe would actually draw in visitors. However, sloths don't. Especially when it's not like we got new sloths or anything. We got a new house for our existing monkeys and sloths. The only thing new, like I said, is we got Tamandua, which is just an anteater. A new monkey, which monkeys are monkeys to the general public. It doesn't matter if howler monkeys are cooler than TT monkeys and whatnot. Um, people just see them as, oh, it's a monkey. And so I think it's just stuff like that that you have to kind of take into consideration where it's like, I mean, what were you really expecting? I, I, and I guess th their expectations were we were supposed to get 1.5 million new visitors or something a year. And it's like, yeah, that's just not going to happen, though, from just some monkeys. Could I imagine that with tigers? Maybe. Maybe. It may be like a combo of the tigers and bears could probably, you know, make us a pretty big deal again. Because then it's like, oh, well, you know, they have big cats and bears. Yeah, cool. That's, that's a cool zoo. But when you're just kind of advertising stuff like monkeys, it's just kind of like, all right, well, you know, 
It's okay, it's just not anything spectacular. I wonder if there's a zoo politics that determine which am animal a particular zoo gets. Well, see, that's the thing with Roger Williams that I will also mention. We get whatever we want if we ask. I've like Because we're a state-run zoo and one of the oldest zoos, even though we're a smaller zoo, we've always gotten what we've asked for. It's just that there's some sort of underlying, like, yeah, like, drama or, like, thing where they always are, like... It's usually budgetary reasons where, you know, they always, like, kind of puff their chest out and be like, oh, well, this is, you know, the plan. This is what we're going to be getting, and it's going to blow everyone's socks off. But usually then they're like, yeah, but it's going to be in X amount of years. It's going to be this this, that, and the other thing, like, they always just kind of find excuses to, like, you know, get around reasons why we might not get a certain thing. I wonder what I'm going to use. I'm going to use this as a roof. Plastic opaque panel. Yeah. Because it's, like... I, I want the zoo to be the best it can, but I just, I, I don't totally agree with what they're always doing to try and deliver, to, to attract new guests to the zoo, is all. Like, I think, actually, I think I might just use a primitive piece in truth. Was it you that said polar bears are never coming back? Yep. Well, I, I don't know if I've said it, but that is the plan. We are, we have no intention on getting polar bears again. Because what happened with the polar bears, it, just as a brief summary, polar bears used to be the zoo's mascot for the longest time. Um, they were our star attraction. We had a very, you know, we we're one of the only holders of polar bears in New England. Um, and they were, like I said, the zoo's mascot. And so, you know, because them and our elephants are the two mascots of the zoo... What they decided was that we need to upgrade the polar bear habitat to be better. So they asked, uh, but not just the polar bears, but also the elephants and giraffes were also getting upgraded. So it was the original master plan called for elephants, giraffes, and polar, be or, uh, and polar bears to all have brand new homes. Okay. And the, the, both the elephant and polar bear exhibits were, at the time the most state-of-the-art habitats you could possibly get. They were asking for $8 million for the polar bears, and I believe $10 million for the elephant and giraffe complex. Okay. Uh, and then part of that was also inc including stuff like we were going to get uh, elephant breeding and a few other things. Okay. So, you know, worthwhile investment. What happened was the elephants and giraffes went over budget. And during transport, our uh, female Trixie died during transport. So because the elephants went over budget, they went, okay, we need more money if we want polar bears back. And then the state didn't want to pay them. So they said, fine, we just won't do polar bears then. And ever since, they've just had no intentions on bringing polar bears back. They talked about it briefly for a, a few years where they were like, oh, well, when we get the money again, we're going to bring them back. But then after a while, they just kind of ignored that entirely and just went, never mind, we're just not going to get them. Um, and so years go by, then they came up with the new drafted master plan, which, you know, had this, which was face of the rainforest is phase, phase one as well as the big backyard, which, again, is a big playground. And those two things were supposed to attract the 1.5 million guests. That did not happen. Phase 2 was going to be a brand new zoo center, which is going to wipe out our zebras and wildebeests and stuff in the process. Again, a thing I think is a ridiculously dumb decision. Uh, and in, in exchange, we're getting sea lions again, and we're getting penguins again. Stuff we already had in the past, mind you. And finally, phase three, which is going to happen in over the years, you know, was 2012, then 2016, then 2018, then 2020, then 2022. Now we're at 2032 when we are expected to get tigers, grizzly bears, moose, 
and a bunch of other animals. Okay, why didn't you start with that <laughs> and then, you know, like, decide afterward, okay, then we'll do the other stuff. Because I just, I don't understand what their logic is, really. Um, but, yeah, that is the intended plan, is we will be getting animals that will actually bring in guests in another 20 years, or another 10 years at this point. Did you say they're going to take away the zebras? Yes, they're taking away... Uh, we'll, we'll take a break, because I, I just uh, paused the stream anyway, or paused my recording. Which I think we're looking pretty good, by the way. I think it's definitely coming together now. Um, so, oh, we're going to take a little master plan tour. So, first things first. They're demolishing this entire area. This entire area, including the zebras, wildebeest, and Watusi, are all getting removed. In exchange, the zebra habitat will become a new sea lion pool with uh, most of it being sea lions, and then I think they're going to make a little penguin area over here by the cheetahs. So that is going to be the new entrance. And it's going to be a new modern entrance, which, you know, I hate modern zoo entrances, but they're doing the big circle design with a big, you know, modern entrance font, etc., etc. Because they always like to do that. Let me see if I can pull up some uh, images just so that you guys have a better idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is going to be the uh, the master plan. There you go. I want to open up chat on the same time. So this is the master plan. So this is going to be the new zoo entrance. So what you're seeing here is basically this. So this is what you see now. This is what you're going to see then is they're going to open it up. This is all going to be a big sea lion pool. That's the front entrance. This area is going to be... Uh, so what is this area currently is going to be this area. So it's going to be... I said it looks like an elementary school, and a lot of people agree with me. It looks like an elementary school. They're trying to go with this modern art thing, and it's, I just don't understand it. Because it's like, this doesn't read zoo to me, this reads elementary school. Um, but that is the plan. So that is the first thing they're wiping out, is they are immediately getting rid of the zebras and stuff. In exchange, we are getting um, sea lions. Which, like I said, uh, sea lions, uh, if we go over here, sea lions used to be in the same habitat as Bubba the harbor seal. We used to have sea lions and seals in this habitat. And then over here in this area, we used to have Humboldt penguins. So this is stuff we already had, mind you. So, you know, that's the first thing. Next part is over here, we got a albino alligator, which they have delivered. The habitat does look cool. Um, I can't look at it. I had to look at it through a window. But that was the, you know, we're supposed to get a reptile house with alligators and Komodo dragons in the education center. Which, I, if anyone see my series, I've kind of explained this stuff. But this education center was supposed to be a new reptile house. That has sort of changed because the Komodo dragons are now located in World of Adaptations over here. Which I think, you know, is fine. They have a habitat right here. So that's where the Komodo dragons are. And like I said, the Chinese... or the, I keep saying Chinese because we used to have Chinese alligators. The albino alligator is over here. And this whole area is the big backyard. And that is a thing that they wanted. So, um, so that plan was this. So this was the reptile building. We were supposed to get a bunch of reptiles or whatever. That has sort of been scrapped now. Uh, so now we move on to, this is the actual master plan. And we can look at a map. Uh, so that, you know, you get a, a, a good idea of what, what we can look forward to. That's super blurry. Let's go to the website. Roger Williams, Park Zoo Master Plan. 20-year master plan. Here we go. So. Where's the full map? Map of the 20-year plan. Here we go. So, this is the new plan. So, like I said, the education building is going to destroy... Uh, pretty much this whole area. So this area right here, which in fairness has nothing anyway, is going to be an education center. 
So that's going to be this entire area where the trees are. Sea lions going to replace the zebras. Cheetahs are staying where they are, I believe. Owdads are getting kicked out. We're not sure what is going there. It just says African habitat. But I've also heard from some zookeepers they might be demolishing that and turning that into a gift shop. <laughs> so we might not even get new animals. Also, hello, Salami. Welcome to the stream. Um, so from what I can tell, uh, you know, that is the plan is this is either going to be an African habitat, which the only animals, unless they destroy all of this rocks and stuff that I can see besides outads are baboons, which baboons would be cool. But losing zebras in the process and wildebeest and stuff, not that cool. So, right off the bat, we're already losing animals and gaining stuff we already had. So then, we go over here. Uh, it says they are supposed to be, we are supposed to be getting colobus monkeys. Which, again, monkeys are cool, and they're going to go over here. Which, I'm sort of fine with. I have no issue with colobus monkeys. We are getting rid of the harbor seals, obviously. Uh, because we're getting sea lions. Um, and in their place are going to be bighorn sheep. So this habitat is going to be converted somehow to be a bighorn sheep habitat. And I guess they're, what they're going to do is maybe open up this area right here. That used to be a trail to the harbor seal. And they're going to make it like a lookout point from what I can tell. And so it's going to be a big field with the harbor or um the bighorn sheep that way and then they're gonna probably uh block this path off so that you can't see the bighorn sheep from this angle in the africa section so next up uh we can talk about uh obviously face of the rainforest so the original face of the rainforest building was very different than what we actually got um so face of the rainforest we we can see now is a big it's a box with a diamond, right? The original plan, however, was it was supposed to be a big square. And we were supposed to have maned wolves in one section, howler monkeys in another section, and giant ant eater in another. So we were supposed to get maned wolf. That has been cut. We are not getting maned wolves. Instead, they just kept the old Tropical America building where the ant eaters are and built this. All we got was giant otters. Um... Part of that was also supposed, we were also supposed to get another thing, which was, um, if you can see, we were supposed to get an aquarium uh, addition to, this was the old uh, Face of the Rainforest concept. So, kind of a cooler design, in my opinion. It was going to have an elevated pathway and stuff where you could look down on the main wolf exhibit and a few other, you know, little side animals and stuff like that. Um... So, you're supposed to have, like, a flamingo section, a maned wolf section, a monkey section, etc. Uh, and it was going to have an elevated path, which we really don't have anymore, or in the new version. But it was looking really good. And this was also supposed to be, we were supposed to get an, uh, an Amazon River aquarium with, like, arapaima and piranha and stuff like that. And we kind of got that, but not really. We got... A small fish tank with some tetras and another small fish tank with some piranhas. But it was very cool. I definitely liked this idea of like a, a very, you know, big open area. Um, so that was the original plan. So again, we'll keep going. So that's Face of the Rainforest. That's changed. We are supposed to be getting back the kangaroo walkabout, which I discussed with Trico and stuff. And that is going to be basically demolishing the river otter, Binturong and Babarusa section, and we're getting and the king vulture, and we're getting a big kangaroo walkabout. Even though we had one where face of the rainforest is. So this this used to be a kangaroo walkabout. If you look on Google Images, the kangaroo walkabout is there. We already had that. They got rid of it. We're bringing it back, but we're getting rid of the Binturong and Babarusa in the process. Moving on to the uh, Marco Polo Trail. So this is the only thing I sort of agree with. They are... Obviously, our, our camel Sasha has died. And so this area where uh, Sasha is, as well as this area where it's just bamboo and stuff, is all going to be converted into a large tiger habitat. Which I'm cool with. Because I think we need tigers. Um, moon bears, for some reason, they still... 
insist we're going to be keeping. I don't know why, because moon bears are our moon bears currently are very very old. They're in their probably 30s now, and so they should be dying very soon. And from what I can tell, you are not supposed or we are not going to be getting more moon bears. So I don't know what their intention with that habitat is going to be when they die, but it's a rather large habitat. So moon bears currently they say are just still in the plan. Um, this area, which, uh, I, I've demolished, uh, is going to be a brand new gibbon habitat. So this area over here is going to be a gibbon habitat. So that is going to be where the gibbons are. If we come over here, bald eagles are here. And then the pronghorn exhibit over here is going to be changed to a grizzly bear habitat. We are getting rid of our red wolves and in place getting gray wolves. So not really a difference there. And uh, we only have one bison left in the zoo. Uh, and so when, and technically it's not a bison, it's a beefalo. But when that bison dies, we are getting moose in this habitat. And that is the plan. And our Reeves Mudjack are getting uh, also destroyed in that process. I don't know why, but they're getting rid of the Reeves Mudjack as well. And that basically brings us to the, the the master plan. So if anyone's been keeping track, losing Zebra, Wildebeest, Watusi, Audad, Harbor Seal, uh, Binturong, Babarusa, um, River Otter, Camels, obviously, and we are gaining Grizzly Bear, Oh, sorry, pronghorn and bison as well, and red wolves. And we are getting colobus monkeys, sea lions, penguins, kangaroos, grizzly bear, and tiger. So, yeah. <laughs> now, what I've said for the longest time is... A great animal that would fit really well in the Africa section in the Outhead enclosure is lions. <laughs> However, the zoo director and other sources at the zoo have always stated that the reason we don't get lions is because lions don't do well in New England. Which my rebuttal to that is, what about Capron Park, Franklin Park, York's Wild Kingdom, or Southwick Zoo that all have lions? Explain that one to me. Literally over half of the zoos in New England have lions, and yet Roger Williams is trying to argue that lions are not feasible. I don't under... And, and their rebuttal, once again, is... And, and this is what I find really hilarious. They said, well, we don't want to add lions because we already have a really large African collection. I agree. We do currently have a really large African collection. However, with this plan, we're getting rid of that large African collection because we're removing the wildebeest, zebra, Audad, and Watusi. <laughs> so our African collection post-master plan is literally going to be cheetah, elephant, giraffe, and red river hog. And that, and colobus monkey, if you want to count that. <laughs> but that's it. I just... Don't get that at all. Yeah, yeah, I am going over the master plan leaf, by the way. Because <laughs> I just... I don't get it. So... Their other argument is we're supposed to be getting... Uh, so they're going to flesh out their Asia section more, which, like I said, we ha we'll we have tigers, moon bear, red crown crane, Takin snow leopard, red panda, and gibbon, which is actually way more than Africa <laughs> at that point. So I just don't get it. Have you shown this to anyone from Roger? Uh, so I was talking about that earlier. Um, I tweeted them the very first episode of the entrance, but I haven't shown them anything since. So when the zoo is basically done at this point, I'm just going to show it off because it's it's almost done. I mean, like I said, we're almost we're working on face of the rainforest right now. And when that's done, I don't like that aspect of Face of the Rainforest, how it just disappears, like, when you get far away. But, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out. That out ad exhibit would be a great line exhibit. Exa but that's what I'm saying. I just don't get it. 
Although it has to be at least 10,000 square feet. That's plenty. I think it's 10,000. I don't think that would be... This is a rather large complex. Like... Like, I, I don't... Th I think this beats out most... Uh, this, this would be the best lion habitat in New England by far. It would far outweigh Southwick's Cape Run or um, any others. So... I'll, I'll definitely say that. I mean, um, but like I said, I think the plan is just demolish this whole habitat to begin with and instead put it in a gift shop. That's what I've heard from keepers. I'm thinking some kind of baboon, maybe gelatas or something could also go there. But, you know, it's a mountain habitat. So it's kind of a, you know, what do you get? What are you realistically going to put there in an Africa section? Um, but yeah. Education building currently is going to be vacant, which I think is also a waste because there's a lot of empty space in here that you could do a lot with. <laughs> like, you could do any number of, you know, small animals in that section, but it's tough. Yeah, it's literally perfect. Capron is literally a square, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, Capron is literally a... If I can pull up the Capron Park lion habitat, I'll show you what the competition is. So you want to talk about... This is the competition for, for New England lion enclosures. This is Capron Park's lion enclosure. Okay. <laughs> and they're an AZA accredited zoo. I should might, like say that. So they're AZA... That's Capron. Southwick Zoo Lions. I'll show... Southwick's is our biggest zoo in New England with lions. Uh, this is their habitat. It's a grass field. Yep. Uh, Franklin Park. What is their lion habitat? I've never been there, so I don't know. But I... I don't know. It's not anything spectacular looking. It looks like a hill with a moat. So, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, it's something. It's just nothing crazy. Yeah, but that's, yeah, Buffalo, New York has lied. Exactly. That, like, I, I think that claim was ridiculous to be like, oh, well, you know, lions don't do well in New England. It's like. Well, even if you want to argue that, which that is an argument that they keep making about a lot of animals they're getting rid of, is zebras don't do well in New England. Um, which I sort of agree with, because I've seen the zebras shivering at Roger Williams. And, you know, weather in New England objectively can get pretty bad. Um, but we're getting rid of zebras because of the weather, owdads because of the weather... We can't have lions because of, because of the weather. We can't have pronghorns or bison because of the weather. That is something I am totally going to disagree with. Because have you seen where bison live? Bison <laughs> literally live in northern... Like, the, the middle of the United States in the northern half. Some crossing into Canada, where it's below freezing. <laughs> that is, they are literally built for cold weather. So, again... I think that's a ridiculous claim. The red wool, replacing red wools with gray wools because they do better with the cold, I can sort of agree with. I'm like, okay, because red wools live in the mid, like um, the southern half of the United States, but like, I don't know. I, I even the red wolves do fine in like Roger Williams and stuff. I, I like there just isn't really an excuse for like why any animal because. The, the worst animals off, and I guess this also could have to do with why they're getting rid of the Binturongs and Babarusas, they don't do well in the cold. So objectively, I could see that being why they're getting rid of them. But, yeah. I'll have to see. New England sounds like my place, England. Yeah. Here at the Bronx, where our lions are always out in the way. Exactly! That's, like, I've been to countless zoos in cold environments, be it the Bronx Zoo or... Southwick's or yeah, or Roger Williams. Like I said, I go out in the winter very frequently. I went literally last week. <laughs> I know what it's like here. I know what could and couldn't live here. Like as an example, the giraffes don't really like the winter. They just go inside. 
They just go inside. And it's not like you're saying, oh, well, the out the lions wouldn't have an indoor habitat. Because, once again, outads already do. The outads literally have... And it's funny, because the doll sheep do the opposite of what outads do. Uh, they, they like the cold, and so they always, like, hate Planet Zoo's weather, because it's too hot. But, um, yeah, they have a house. And so, you could expand this if you wanted in any given direction, if you needed to make it bigger. You could cut into the habitat a little bit if you needed to make a bigger, um, facility for them. You could get rid of this little section in the pond. There's a lot of things you could do. Um, because what I feel really bad about... Uh, animals that don't do well at all that they're still keeping are the red river hogs which live in this habitat and they are not out during the winter at all and so they spend and this is a pretty two scale size of their house this is where they're kept during uh winter is a is in a house about this size for the entire winter season so i actually genuinely feel bad about that um but uh yeah so that's the Roger Williams master plan. Uh, let's see. So let's let's just get back to building. So the reason I like took that little detour to begin with is because I wanted to uh, start working on the interior a little bit and laying that out. So yeah. So. Other than um, my, so I had to take these photos. These are from back in February. So this is before coronavirus. And I've been in the house since coronavirus. Nothing has changed. The only difference is you, uh, and it is now one-way traffic inside of Face of the Rainforest. Um, but this is sort of what you can expect. So this is sort of from the left side. Um, and from the right side, I took another photo. Where is it? Give me a sec. Here it is. So yeah. So basically as you enter in, this is the monkey habitat. So, I mean, I suppose like we might as well just make the monkey habitat now. We could do that quick because that would literally take no time. And uh, I don't know. I think it would just give us a... Uh, a little bit of an excuse to start, you know, working on the actual thing. So as you walk in, you walk in here, and then this is our monkey habitat. So it's glass. So this is home to howler monkeys, titi monkeys, and um, what's the other monkey species? I'm drawing a blank. Um, TT monkeys, howler monkeys, and Saki monkeys. That's the last one. So let's start working on this. I'm probably going to be replacing these walls uh, with something else when I'm done. But just for now, I just wanted to get, you know, some of them in place. So let's do that for now. Actually, I might want to do this. Because the other thing is, there are exhibits in this area that I want to take into consideration. Because we need three little habitats that I have to include. So basically, we're going to do this. Up. If, it won't, if it doesn't lag, at least, we're going to try to... Because um, they have three little exhibit-style things. Which, like I said, just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to call them exhibits. You know. Um... Then afterward, 
There is a little piranha tank. So the piranha tank is going to go here. Again, I'm going to mark them off with exhibits. And I think I want to use faux rock. They don't want angle snap on. So they have kind of like this off grayish color to them. Sort of like this. And then they curve sort of like this. And then this area is, if I can get, yeah, like a solid flat concrete. This is sort of like this a little bit. So what I'm working on right now, this is the piranha tank right here. I just want... So the issue is I'm trying to get like a good, not round um, look to the wall here. Like I want it to be flat if possible. Something like that maybe. So that is going to be the piranha section right over there. And I'm going to work on the rock work afterward. I'm just kind of mapping it out right now. So I think I want the building to be a little bit wider or a longer. So call this a creative liberty. I don't even think it is really. Um, but I'm going to make the building just a couple of things wider. Just because I also want to include um, some room for a backstage area. Because obviously, like, you know, they need to be able to get to, like, stuff like the, uh, the giant otters and stuff. So, I'm just going to extend it just a, a little bit, which shouldn't be an issue. And then this area over here, I can extend. This area is also a backstage area, so let's put that in place. Now I'm wondering if this is going to be too small for the monkeys. Because it isn't a huge building. Let me place down a Frank. Um, no, that's actually fine. I'm fine with that. So we can do this. So this is going to open up to the outdoor section. 
of the monkey habitat. And then we can just raise it up a bit. Excellent. That's all looking good now. I'm also sorry if my voice is dying. That's just from talking all day. So depending, I might end the stream a little in a little bit, um, which makes sense. It's three o'clock. It's about the normal time I stop streaming. But uh, who knows? I might maybe because I'm enjoying building right now. So I might come back later or something. Either that or, like I said, I think I might start streaming tomorrow. Just as, like, a little, like, I want to start just streaming more. So let's try this out for size. There we go. That's all in place now. That's all good. It's all good. So let's see. Nature. Let me see those exhibits. So they're all squares. So that's kind of nice at least. So first can go like that, then the second one like that, and then the third one is a little bit higher up. Looks good, that looks good. Uh, right here is gonna be the glass. Uh, if I str if you stream tomorrow, what time will it be? Uh, well, let, let's leave that up to you guys. So would you guys want me to do like same time as usual or would you want it maybe later in the day? Like, because I could do maybe like a 4.30 to 6.30 stream, if people are cool with that. But I am all ears if someone has an idea. Oh, you know what I should use, actually? The uh, bricks. Right here. Yeah, if I wanted like a smooth wall. I mean, now I sort of have that, but honestly, yeah, let's just do this. Let's first make a, because this is going to be a pain otherwise, we'll add in the water for the piranhas. So we'll do this. And it doesn't have to be super big. So. Raise it up. Drop in our water. And then we'll be good later in the day. All right. Yeah, I can do later in the day. So how about we start at 4.30? How does that sound for everyone? 4.30 sound good. And then we'll go until 6.30 or so. 
I think that works for me. So 4 p.m. is good? Or yeah, well, uh, 4.30. So yeah, it'll be uh, 4.30 instead of uh, 4. I mean, I could do 4 if you guys want. I could do 4 until 6.30. Maybe like a little longer stream or so. Okay, so yeah, we'll do 4 o'clock then. 4 o'clock is cool with me. So I'm just going to quickly uh, finish the piranha tank, and then uh, we will end this stream. I think we made a, a good progress on Face of the Rainforest, though. Definitely is coming along. Far better than I expected, to be honest. So that's always good. <laughs> Just do this. You just tell I'm dying. <laughs> oh, like my voice is just so fried right now. So let's do that. Maybe do that. Flippity doodah. Just because I hate repetitive textures. I don't know if anyone else does, but if you can tell anything is repeating, it annoys me. So as an example, something like that looks good. Gotta go by. Well, thank you for stopping by, Happy Jack. We are almost done anyway. Like I said, we're just gonna finish this little thing uh, thingamabob up and then we will be good. Sup Zekin? Welcome back. Been hanging in the lurk cave. It's cool. We're just uh, we're working on the a a literal cave right now full of piranhas. Why they put the piranhas in a cave I don't know but I didn't design this zoo so so we'll do this. But speaking of Zeke, I was like literally like about to. I was worried about the stream because you're obviously the master of big glass angular buildings and stuff. Um, and so I was like, oh god, like I'm gonna have a lot of you know people being like, oh wow, you're doing terrible on this entire thing. But I I actually think I did a decent job. It's definitely not bad looking. It could be better, probably, but I don't think I'm upset with the final result. This rock work, on the other hand, is questionable. Let's see. Delete that. Do we have any just like long, flat pieces? Oh. I need to learn the pieces in this game, because <laughs> that long, thin, flat piece is sort of what I, I was looking for this whole time. Yep, that is exactly what I was looking for. Now I feel dumb. How does it stack? Okay, well luckily it doesn't stack. Well, not luckily, but... It doesn't stack as well, so I don't feel as bad. Did someone say rock work? 
Yep, we're working on uh, piranha tanks right now for uh, Face of the Rainforest. It's 3 o'clock and everyone comes up, comes alive. As soon as the stream's about to end, too. So let's just do this for now. So just for transparency's sake, we'll do this. And then let's use mulch. Oh, I'm in the habitat thing. Does anyone else? Or uh, I definitely. It's definitely a pain in the end. It's all boils down to how satisfied you are with it. Yeah, I was like, gl glass is just not fun. And it's the only thing I'm not crazy about with like recreations is like if you're. Just trying to, if you're like mimicking concept art, but can go off book a little bit, or um, maybe not even concept art, but like, let's say you're just like, oh, I'm just making an original thing, be it, you know, uh, an aquarium or something like um, a modern building or something. It's, it's, it's a lot easier when it's not, you know, it has to be accurate or whatever, because then you're kind of stuck with the in-game limitations a little bit. All right, so let's do aquatic because we need little tiny details in this fish tank. But these aquatic uh, South American plants are definitely going to help me. Yeah, eelgrass. Well, the Tetra tank actually has a lot of eelgrass in it, so I'll put a lot in that. And then the Piranha tank doesn't really have that much. I love how Bayou Frank is just, like, shooting the glass. Oh, yeah, the terrariums in-game are absolutely too big. You are not wrong about that at all. Um, let's see. Hydrilla. Hydrilla, why are you so big? I want to use you, but I can't. I don't even know if you could really even tell that, like, um... Like, I'm wondering if you can actually realistically tell if there's even water in this tank. Because, like, the water in the game just, like, doesn't really look like anything. But, yeah, I mean, it's full of water. Sup, Crocs? Everyone, like I said, everyone's just joining, like, as soon as I was about to, about to end. But, let's see... Because I guess I can try to add the path in. So you enter here. And I'm frankly just going to have Frank get it. Uh, going to, for now, just make the path very basic. Oh, well that would do it. Everything in here, for some reason, is not flat. Which could prove challenging with this path system. Is it flat now? Alright. We'll do this. Because just to vaguely map out areas of interest. Areas that are brown are going to be like jungle, essentially.
jungle slash habitats, let's put it that way. So like over here, as an example, there is a green anaconda habitat. Which green anaconda will probably be a mod I make, if people were wondering. And then river otters are going to be over here. This is all river otter habitat. They probably won't be able to dive, but you know. <laughs> and so, again, I might fix the paths afterward, but just for now, we'll do this. Oh, great. Is it going to have... Uh, why does it have to have ugly paths? You're going to make covering them up so difficult, game. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll just try doing this, then... And then maybe if I place the habitats back in afterward, it won't have as big of an issue. This is all going to be area for them. This is the agouti habitat. We'll do this. And that's where you exit. And then over here. This is going to technically be a bridge area where I'm working now, but that is approximately the house. So honestly, I'm going to leave it there. Um, this is what we got so far, but uh, you know, tomorrow at four, I am going to be continuing this stream. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Consider becoming a member uh, on my YouTube channel. And as always, thank you for supporting the channel. And also, if anyone didn't see today, I have published the Babarusa episode with my lovely girlfriend, Julie, um, today. So if anyone hasn't seen it, uh, check that out for sure. And as always, I just want to end the stream by uh, thanking my mem my members. So, uh, Beyond Drew, uh, Genevieve, Totter, Leaf, Mark, Vicky, Andy... Thank you all for supporting the channel as always. I appreciate you, and I will see you all tomorrow. So thank you. Bye, everyone.